Here we go. One, two. That's it. Move it back. Move it back. That's it. That's it. Two. One. It is good. Good. Up it. Up, up, up it. Squeeze. To me, a true believer is a person that you know, believes in anything they put their mind into. Um, I feel like they have to have the most confidence in themselves and you'll be successful from there. The great players' work ethic is 10 times more than just the good players. Those great players always get back to that grind and just keep wanting to get better. Ready? Go ahead. Five of them. One. Straight back up. Good. Hey, don't let that left leg hit that ground. Keep that chest high. I think initially I wanted to name him after his dad. And he was like, well, I'm junior, so he didn't want to be the third. So we were like, well, let's pick a name that's different, um, that's unique. And we both like basketball. So we were like, well, Penny, at the time, Penny Hardaway was in Orlando. He was from Tennessee, where Charles is from. And so we were like, okay, let's name him Anthony. That's different. He's always played it, but I noticed that he started to take it more serious, I guess I should say. In middle school, like I remember he was probably in like the seventh or eighth grade and we had a goal outside our house and he had been trying to dunk like all summer. And then he finally got, he like ran in the house, oh my God, can he just come outside and just dunk? Maybe record him so he can look at it over and over again. I ended up going to the MPBA Top 100 camp in summer 2017. One day at the camp and somebody just came up to me and was like, hey, you got bumped up to like number six in the country. And I was completely shocked. The idea of bypassing college and going to the NBA draft was brought up to me by a writer doing an interview with me. And he was like, you know, you're able to bypass college and go to the NBA draft because you did post-grad. And I didn't know that at the time when I was just like, whoa, okay. We actually, I think, found out on Twitter. Yeah, like... Because, like, stuff happens so fast now in real time, you don't really get a chance to call and tell your parents after you've had a discussion. They put the article out and it's kind of like, we're like, wait, what? Like, we were just talking about what school we're going to go to. I just felt like college was gonna be there. If this is what you truly wanna do, then let's go and do it. And so he said, this is what I wanna do, Dad. I said, I'm all for what I'm, I'm with you. I'm really impressed with Anthony, considering that he's 19 years old. He's got a great presence about him. He's got great confidence. He's very mature. He's got what it takes to be successful off the court. I know what he has on the court. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the top players in the NBA. Anthony has a lot of those guys' characteristics. He's not a conscious shooter. He will shoot at any point in time, any different type of way. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Klay Thompson. I mean, he has the attributes of a lot of great scores that I've worked with. You got what it takes. All you gotta do is continue to do this work. Continue to dream. You ready for this next step? Anthony's a unique athlete. He's 18 years old. Uh, he's, he's starting to learn his body. And uh, I like to bring in different people to help him understand his body, learning how to use his feet, his arms, his hands, using you know, his God-given abilities. So, you know, cross-training is, is important. I've heard a little bit of people saying stuff that he's, I'm not ready and stuff like that, but I don't really worry about that too much. I'm just worried about me and my development as a player. The mindset I keep all the time is just wanting to be the best. I feel like that just pushes me even more. Even though I don't want to do it, my body tells me, oh, you, you might not be able to do it today. But me, my drive and wanting to be the best is which just pushing me forward. He's always been the type of person that's focused on himself and his development. He has not really allowed things outside of himself to get in the way, whether it be the rankings or how someone else is doing. Um, we've always taught him that, you know, it's important for you to be the best version of yourself because when you start chasing individuals, when you catch them, what do you do? You got to find somebody else to chase. So as he grows, he has to learn that you're always going to have doubters. If you channel all your energy to the doubters, you're going to lose focus of who you are and what you're trying to do because they're going to try to dictate what you do and how you do and you just have to be yourself. And some people are going to love you, some people aren't. I'm ready for this moment and I'm ready, you know, take that jump and be that player. I'm really willing to go in and work hard and be a good teammate.
All I can say, bro, from experience, I know about how your life is about to change. Most important thing, bro, is having somebody around you who can keep you grounded. And make sure you take care of your family first. I know your dream's about to come true real soon, and you just gotta stay level-headed. It's gonna be good, though, bro. The biggest part of my motivation would probably be when I was like sixth, seventh grade, everybody was like, he's not gonna make it, he's not good enough, or he, he has a bad attitude. I heard that a lot, whole lot, but it, I didn't have a bad attitude. I wanted to win. They'll say he's not coachable or stuff like that. So that just motivated me to, to prove everybody wrong. Now those people, they want to be cool with me, which is, that's not me. When Colin was seven years old, he came home crying. He was in the first grade, came home crying. I'm Colin, what's wrong with you? And he was like, um, we were in class and the teacher asked everybody what they wanted to be when they grow up. And when I said I wanted to be an NBA player, she looked at me and she said, um, you need something to fall back on. I said, but what you can do, if you continue to work hard and go to school and become successful and you know stay dedicated to working, you will become an NBA player. It was very interesting growing up with two younger brothers that was into basketball because they constantly bounced the ball in the house. We had hardwood floors, so they were constantly bouncing the ball, throwing the ball up against the doors. I did not like losing to him because if I lost to him, he would be very, very blunt. He would go crazy. I beat him, I did this. Well, I'll say I got got intensity from my family. Like, whatever we do, we always gonna compete and talk trash. And also, uh, I used to watch like, uh, like Kevin Garnett and Rasheed Wallace. Sometimes you, you can see a look in somebody's eye, if they scared or not, then you know you got him. He's a true throwback. He uh, doesn't have social media. Wanted to be in the gym, wanted to get the work in, and that's what he always stick with. The first time I met Coach Avery, it was a whole lot of energy, a whole lot of hand gestures, a whole lot of emotion. That's really how I am. Um, I like laughing, just like joking around, just whole lot of energy all the time. Me and Coach Avery being in the same position, I felt like we connected because he went and played somewhere that I want to get to, and that's the NBA. This year was the first time we went to the NCAA tournament since 2012. The minute he walked in here, I told him, you have to become a winner. You have to show that you can win. We know that you can get buckets, but you have to show that you can win. And I think his determination, he carried us. You know, he carried us to the tournament. You know, we hadn't had a lottery pick since 95 McDice, and we haven't had a first round pick since 01. So his impact on the program is great. It'll be forever in the record books what, what Cotton Sexton did at the University of Alabama. Well, once the season ended, um, I noticed that, you know, he was still in, you know, in school. And um, I said, Colin, you're not going to be like everybody else. Declare for the draft and quit. And he was like, no. He said, I want my degree. So we lose to Villanova, uh, which was a tough game. You know, kind of got beat pretty bad. Immediately when we got back, he was in study hall at 10 at night. After well, my last college game, I was back in the classroom working hard because um, I feel like, why would I stop in the middle of something? Why not finish? And then also I feel like I can't let my brothers and sisters have their degree without me. I'm trying to get on the wall too. With a lot of teams really need a, 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 a PowerPoint like this right here, uh, we going to do something to you, you know what I'm saying? It's that kill mode, man. Y'all put it in him. Y'all put it in him too young, man. <laughs> With that young man's skill set, if he's still around after the eighth pick, I'll be shot. I'm going to call somebody if he's still around after the eighth pick. One afternoon, I got a call from Coach Avery. He said that Colin had been clocking a lot of hours in the gym by using his finger as far as the key fob. Found out a little bit later in the week that he had to cut the lights off on him. He wasn't happy about it. He just felt like this is all he knew. So he thought he was doing everything correctly, but still having to understand, you know, your downtime is needed. When they were younger, we presented them with Move With A Purpose, um, designed to have them not just be average, but do it in a way that actually helps them not following the same footsteps as their peers. 
because somebody else does it doesn't mean that you have to do it. Um, dare to be different. These things were qualities we knew that we wanted in our kids. A true believer means to believe in yourself. Don't let nobody alter the way you feel about something and go for it. All arms, hop into it, take your time, and make your shot. Follow through. If I'm not working, someone's working harder than me. I think I learned how to work when I got to league. I didn't really understand how, to, how hard I had to work before. So I instilled that in Jalen, you know, at a, at a young age to kind of eliminate the fact of uh, just trying to make it every year. I think he put himself in a great position. The credit goes to him. He put the work in. I gave him the blueprint, but he did it. When um, Michael Jordan played with the Wizards, and we went in and he asked to get a Michael Jordan jersey. So I bought him one. One of uh, the players or coaches asked if he wanted to go in the locker room. There's just an uproar when he comes out. They come out and say, you won't believe what your son just did. And Michael Jordan asked him if he wanted him to sign the jersey. And Jalen said, no, you'll mess it up. He just was a true fan and, you know, a kid. Honest, he just didn't know. I knew Jalen wasn't one and done. Just, just the type of guy, the type of player he's going to be. Just wasn't ready to be that type of kid. So we got to read a three-year plan. And I told Jay Wright, I have three years for him to graduate, for him to win his national championship, and then he's gonna get out of here. That was our whole plan the whole time. Well, a lot of people talk about a three-year plan. You know, we, we, we have it for a number of players. Very few complete that three-year plan. And uh, even after his second year, we thought, all right, he's good enough to be an NBA player. And we had a meeting with Rick and Sandra, and it was real simple. Sandra said, I, I want him to get his degree, and he wants his degree. And Rick said, I want one more year. He needs to get a year better. And honestly, I have the confidence that I can, if I do, if I set my mind to something, I'm going to do it. And I, I mean, that's just the confidence I have. But I knew my dad's never steered me wrong from anything. And everything he said throughout my career has come true. Uh, just from me working hard and not really focusing on you know, the outcome, just always focusing on getting better every day. And so um, I, I, I trust my father, I trust my parents because everything they said has come true. I've never seen anyone at Villanova graduate in three years, let alone a student athlete or a national player of the year caliber athlete. So watching this process was amazing. It was a lot of difficult decisions he had to make, loading up in the summer, uh, declining going to the sneaker company's camps where you're seen by NBA scouts to stay and make sure he was on time to graduate in three years. So there were a lot of sacrifices. It was incredible to watch the precision, the commitment, the work ethic, and really the, the sacrifice. Balancing academics you know, during the season is tough. I was up early in the morning, I was up late at night, and um, I was just trying finding times where I had time to study. Looking back, and seeing what Jalen's accomplished and reaching his goals and graduating in three years, it's remarkable. I, I have to pinch myself sometimes. As a parent, you know, you, you teach your children and you, you preach, you know, work hard, be disciplined, do the right thing and so forth. And I find myself thinking, wow, he actually listened. <laughs> you know, wow, he's, he actually did that. And he did it flawlessly with respect of, you know, not missing a beat. He's an example of just pure dedication. Junior year was um, not surprising. I don't think anyone on the outside thought we were going to do what we did this year. But uh, for me, I had goals written on my wall from the first week of the uh, first semester. My junior year, and I had the East Play of the Year, Big Five Play of the Year, uh, National Play of the Year, Big East Tournament Champions, uh, NCAA Champions. I mean, I had goals written on my wall because I knew what we were capable of, I knew what I was capable of. And um, I just 
try not to focus on myself, just focus on the team and what the team needed, and you know, we, we achieved those goals. Probably the biggest obstacle for him was not being the go-to guy. For his first two years, he didn't have to be the go-to guy, but when we needed him to, he was always there. In his third year, he was the go-to guy, and then the obstacle was, how do I make sure I'm the go-to guy and I keep everybody else involved? He is a natural killer. He, he wants all the weight on his shoulders, so when you need him to do it, he does it. He'll do it and also make everybody else look good while he's doing it. He's human. I mean, he's he's heard and read and about you know he's not an athlete, too too small, too slow. He's heard all that. But like I keep saying to people, he's one of eight people in the history of Illinois that won over 100 games in high school. He's won over 100 games in college. He won two gold medals. So at the end of the day, you keep doubting him, he keeps winning. You keep doubting him, he keeps getting Player of the Year. You keep doubting him, he's a McDonald's All-American. So that's the motivation of what people keep saying. But at the end of the day, it's, all that matters is what I say, what his mom says, what he believes in. We always take pride in the guys in our program, and I feel like he is the combination of Randy Foy, Kyle Lowry, the best of both. The intelligence, the toughness, the skill, the leadership. One thing that separates great players from good players is their detail, the detail to little things. And those great players, they really you know, take pride in just watching film, you know, watching what they eat, and making sure they're in the best shape of their life, just to get that edge. A true believer is just being able to believe in yourself, being able to believe in the process. You know, what you're doing is the right thing for you. I have the answers to the test. They're in my back pocket. I just need to be able to study them and know that I'm going to do well in this test as long as I look at them.